Sri Ramesh Swami needs no introduction to any of you. He is the face of Unnati. His tireless efforts for the past so many years, which has been ably assisted by many good Samaritans over this period, has earned Unnati a special mention amongst the well-known non-profit organizations in our country. He breathes Unnati 24-7, 365 days. He is well-known in social and Carnatic music circles. Unnati has a laudable vision on, of training over a million youth. Let us hear Sri Ramesh Swami talk about Unnati, the rising star. Unnati has been doing things differently with an energy, with a kind of passion, dedication, focus, which is not very common. The Mars Orbiter mission was successful last week video. and since then there have been so many incredible facts that have come out. It was made in 74 million dollars, that it was cheaper per kilometer than an auto rickshaw, that it was cheaper than what Hollywood took to make a movie about going to space. But one thing that wasn't as popular as it should be is how it was all done. It's brilliant and you should know it. See, India has launched satellites before, but Mars is a hundred times further away than the moon. You need an incredible amount of thrust to get it directly from here to there. And the US did that. They made a super powerful launcher that can do the job. Since our satellite was a little lighter than theirs, we tried to do it a little differently. We thought instead of making a new powerful launcher, we have an old launcher that is not that powerful, but what can we use along with it that is available for cheap that can get us all the way there? We used gravity to make it happen because nothing is cheaper than free. Wait, what? We use gravity to get away from the grip of gravity? That's exactly what makes it interesting. So we use something called the interplanetary slingshot to get it all the way there. We use Earth's gravity to gather speed, the Sun's gravity to travel, and then Mars's gravity to get closer to it. You beautiful, beautiful people at ISRO. And that's not even the most impressive part. The most impressive part is that the entire program was developed and built right here. Just to put that in perspective, America still uses Russian equipment. Japan tried to build their own and their mission failed. China used Russian equipment and they couldn't get off the launch pad. And young Israel quietly did it all on its own. India is innovating. It's about time we stop talking about inventing the zeros and Aryabhatta and Vedas. India is innovating now and you should know about it. As we speak, there are laboratories in India where there's heavy research going on in nuclear technology. We're trying to find a way to use thorium, which is abundantly more available than uranium, as an energy source. The number of papers we've submitted on this is twice as much as any other country. And we even have a plant that's scheduled to come up in 2016. That is huge because India has the highest reserves of thorium in the world. Our energy problems could be solved forever. India is innovating. They say Indians are only good at managerial jobs and dog work. So these two guys went to find out if that was true. They went to talk to heads of innovations of major companies like Google, Microsoft and Intel to ask them if this was true. As it turns out, these heads of innovations were Indians. Not people of Indian origin, people who came through the same road education system here. India is innovating. 750 multinational companies have set up their research and development offices in India. Research and development, the core of their innovation. Not call centers, not data feeding, research and development. IBM has 70,000 Americans and 150,000 Indians. The number of usable patents India puts out is as much as any other country. Flights can land in zero visibility and fly without collision because of Indian patents. India is innovating. There is so much innovation happening and it's just the beginning. We can do so much more. We need to stop being engineering graduates and be engineers. Engineer something. We need to stop being drafting experts and be designers. Make something. We need to stop making the aim of our lives to settle down and look to steer something up. See, when you say India is not innovating, we're not talking about the soil, the land, or the territory. India in that sentence is the people. That's you and me. So India is innovating and so are we. Unnati in 2003 came out with a 90-day program which was probably the shortest duration vocational training program in the country. Today, it is a 50-day program. 50 days, you see a youth comfortable in English. 
50 days you see a youth transformed just 50 days you have a youth getting a job in a corporate you just heard dr randir mishra talk about the unext program it sounds like another routine finishing school product let me assure you my dear friends it is a phenomenal comprehensive solution to the problems of the youth of the graduating youth where are we we have done 10000 odd youth across many centers in this country somebody if they had asked us some years back did you imagine did your organization think of achieving this the answer is no n o no what we thought of so many years back was if we can help some 50 60 youth train them and give them jobs it's a phenomenal effort and that is how unnati was born so what has changed today our intention our intent our confidence our will our resolve the urge to train and place 1 million youth in the coming years I would like to spend some time on this slide. It's a very important slide. We are defined, bound, governed by these set of values. We talk of authenticity. It's a purity of intent. It is that truthfulness to any stakeholder including our primary customer the youth we always will walk the talk when we talk of quality you're talking of professionalism you're talking of the ease and beauty with which we deliver our effort our attempt to excel will always continue Effectiveness, we are talking of transforming youth continuously, every 50 days. It's a market-driven, market-oriented program. You are talking of 100% job guarantee to the satisfaction of the youth to make him happy and not just him, the entire family. And what is all this, the fundamental, the foundation? the dedication the love for the philosophy of unnati the love for the organization unnati the love for the work what we do and let me tell you the fierce commitment with which we continue to do day in and day out unnati is undoubtedly the lowest you know, cost wise the most effective model across the country. Our track record of 100% placement across all centers remains unparalleled. You have seen Ramani talk about the growth trajectory. In the next six months, we are talking of at least 12 centers being added. 2016-17 is a very important year for us with over 35 centers operational and we hope that 200 youth will come across graduating from each of these centers making it something like 7,000 youth in the next year. The next phase will be to take it to scale. Immediately we are talking of Tamil Nadu. We already have four centers in Tamil Nadu. 
We are talking of another probably 25, 30 centers. It could be Kerala, Andhra, Maharashtra, where we have already two centers, Gujarat, where we have a center. So it is, we are talking of increasing it, our presence in many other states. And yes, on a later date, it will be a rapid expansion across the nation. So where will the numbers come from? We are talking of a million youth. We told you we want to train a million youth. Where will the numbers come from? So what's next? You next is our big idea. You heard Randir talk about you next. It's a game changer. There's huge synergy between what we do in Unnati and what we are talking about in the UNEXT program. We will be going to the colleges, we will be training youth there and helping them achieve their goals in a very short period of time. In the years to come, we are talking of probably 150 odd centers. Each center for us should be doing at least 400 youth. When I say one center, it could be a center in Raichu which will talk to at least some five, six colleges where you will have at least 400 odd youth graduating against any stream, whether it is ITI, Polytechnic, Engineering, BA, BCom, BSc, any of those streams. We are talking of 400 youth against each, with, attached with each center. So you are talking of 115 to 400, which is something like 600 odd, uh, 60,000 odd youth. So this is where we are, 2016, 17, we are talking of 10,000 youth, the 7,000 plus a uh, next growth of at least 3,000, we are talking of 10,000 odd youth. By 2021, we are talking of a million youth. It is a very, very laudable, huge task in front of us. But we have to replicate. We have to go to many centers. We have to take it forward. We have the toolkit. You can imagine if we can start 12 centers in the next six months. You can understand the kind of toolkit, the kind of preparation we have to take it to scale. Can we do it alone? We need your support, your moral support. It's more about believing in us that this group will deliver. Once you feel that way, I can assure you, we together will achieve. Thank you.